Hello and welcome to Learn Data. It's great to have you on this channel. I'm Nilesh and in this video, we'll continue to learn about scikit-learn pre-processing. Here we'll talk about quantile transform. And in this particular video, we'll look at the uh, intuition behind what is quartile, quantile, and percentile. The implementation part of this quantile transform we'll look at in the following video. So the word quart in quartile as uh, evolution has shown in this particular slide the word quator in latin means four and that is carried on in today's english which is quart where which means four and that word in quartile would mean that dividing a data set into four equal parts and this is related to quantile as well so as we can see in this slide a quantile is uh, talking about dividing the range of probability distribution so two quantiles uh, means median and when we are dividing in four quantiles it means quartile and if you are doing uh, dividing in 100 quantiles then it's called percentile and quantiles can go up to 100 uh, 1000 or more quantiles as well so briefly quartile is dividing a data set into four equal parts percentile in the, on the other hand is dividing a data set into 100 equal parts now let's look at these seven data points that we have which are arranged from in increasing number from left to right from 3 to 11 if we divide this into four equal parts by as shown by the red dotted lines in the center we get the median which is uh, q2 or the second quartile and after that on either side we have the first and the third quartile q1 and q3 here this is denoted by the number 7.5 and 9.5 and uh, the reason why it's 7.5 and not 7 is because there are different ways to calculate the values and we'll talk about that in coming upcoming slides uh, but uh, here we'll take those values as the uh, first quartile third quartile and then we have the zeroth quartile and the fourth quartile the and a q3 minus q1 we get the interquartile range and that corresponds to 50% of the data so we have up to q1 we have first 25% of the data lower 25 and then from q q3 to q4 we have the top 25% of the data and within uh, q1 and q3 we have 50% of the data now when we look at quantile the middle uh, would be 0.5 quantile and then we have 0.25 and 0.75 on either side of that and then on the extremes we have the zero zero quantile and one quantile now if you look at the percentile we have the 50 50th percentile in the center uh, and either side we have the 25th percentile and the 75th percentile and on the extremes we have zeroth and the hundredth percentile now if we were to uh, look at a distribution uh, as shown here by this curve in gray then we can uh, look at how the quartiles uh, would divide that particular distribution here again we have a box plot on the top for comparison and as you can see the center here it's the mean would be you know, overlapping in this case with the median so the center of the box plot right here shown by this uh, red line is the median which is q2 and the this area of the box is 50 percent of the data and then this is a lower 25 percent and this is a uh, top 25 percent of the data and uh, again these uh, values are given here by q1 minus 1.5 times the interquartile range and this is given by q3 plus oh, 1.5 times the interquartile range and these are if the values outside of these are considered outliers 
it depends uh but that's generally uh a one way to detect outliers as well now how is a quantile calculated uh, this is based on numpy methods there are five different ways as shown here on the left bottom there is linear lower higher nearest and midpoint let's say we have again those seven data points and the indices of those would be uh, from 0 through 6 as shown here in the blue and let's say we want to calculate the 0.25 uh, quantile for this what we would then have to do is first find the fraction right here so the fraction uh, to get the fraction uh, we first need to find n n is uh, basically just the length of uh, length minus 1 for this particular data set so we have seven data points minus one so we have six and then we are calculating uh, the uh, product of this value six multiplied by the quantile 0.25 and therefore we get 1.5 the fraction is the part after the decimal of 1.5 so we have 0.5 as the fraction now to get the value so that's one part now we need to find i and j so to find i we take this particular value of m that we calculated 1.5 and here we can see that uh, we have to go up to index 1 so 0 1 and 1 1.5 would be between 1 and 2 so the lower part a uh, lower number uh, at index 1 would be 7 so i is seven and then and on the higher side we have eight uh, which is because 1.5 is between one and two index so we have seven and eight for i and j and then we can go ahead and substitute those values uh, as shown here so for linear we have 7.5 for lower we have seven higher we have eight and for midpoint we have 7.5 so uh, that's uh, those are the different values you can get uh, by each of these methods let's look at another example so in this case we are trying we are using the quantile 0 0.75 and now if we again calculate the fraction uh, we calculate the value of m as 4.5 so we are looking at the index 4 uh, and 5 uh, so 4.5 is between 4 and 5 so right here uh, so i would be 9 and j would be 10 uh, and the fraction in this case is again 0.5 so if we substitute those values we get for linear we get 9.5 lower we get 9 higher we get 10 and for midpoint we get again 9.5 so these are different implementations of how those are calculated now quantiles uh, if we look at the cumulative distribution plot as shown here uh, uh, we have on x-axis we have quantiles and on the y-axis we have the uh, probability which is calculated by the cumulative distribution function and here uh, what i wanted to show you is that to interpret this we can say that on this particular plot 0.25 or 25 percent of the data lies below q1 so that's the first quartile lower quartile and then uh, 50 percent of the data lies below the second quartile so right below this and then we have 75 percent of the data uh, is at or below uh, third quartile and looking at this further uh, beyond the seven data points we can look at another example in this we have uh, the data for sepal length for iris flower that's shown here in the picture and if we look at the histogram of the data points this is how it looks on the x-axis we have the sepal length in centimeters and the y-axis we have counts and the green dots are just uh, those mean number of data points that were calculated now we can 
use that that data to calculate a probability density curve as shown right here ad plot and this has density on the y-axis so what it tells us is we can sum the uh, probability values uh, between let's say a specific range also four and five so it tells us if let's say we uh, uh, sum the values between four and five or four and six then that area tells us that uh, that's the probability for uh, the sepal length to be between four and five or four and six now there's another way to uh, you plot that data which is using a cumulative distribution function as shown here and as uh, we saw in the plot on the previous slide here we can say that if we look at the point 2 and if we uh, go up to the curve and then come back down on the x-axis we can see that uh, approximately 20 percent of the data uh, is such that the sepal length is at or below five centimeters so that's how you would interpret that and here the dotted there are two ways this is shown one is the empirical cumulative density function which is the uh, uh, blue line and then we have the theoretical one calculated using the mu and sigma which is the dotted line now the reason of for showing this plot is because the quantile function as shown here it's exact opposite of the cumulative distribution function uh, so it's inverse of that so as shown in here the x and y axis are switched so in the quantile function we are asking the opposite question so given the probability of point two what is the uh, what are the data points that lie at or below that probability and here if we again go back on the y-axis you can see that the sepal length would have to be five or less now for the quantile transform that particular um, uh, inverse on inverse CDF or inverse cumulative distribution function also called as percent point function is used to transform the data that's shown here on the left into the data that we see here here on the right hand side uh, the scikit-learn has two methods one is uniform distribution and one is other one is normal distribution so the top one as we can see it's a uniform distribution and on the lower uh, plot we have the normal distribution and then the way this transformation occurs is without going into much detail the data is uh, uh, converted into percentiles ranked and then interpolation is used add values in there and then the algorithm uh, maps it to either a uniform distribution or normal distribution. Uh, that, uh, in this particular video, we'll focus on its implementation and just the uh, 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 intuition behind what is the step going from a data point, a raw data to a transformed data. Another example here for a quantile transform is let's say we have this uh, data set that's shown here on the left hand side we have the months on the x-axis and let's say for a particular event uh, on the y-axis those are the number of buses that run for that particular event uh, throughout the month and we can see that the data has uh, quite a lot of very uh, uh, range difference so for first month it's barely below uh, it's it's always below 10 it looks like and then it's higher in second month and for the third month it's above 100 now if we do a quantile transform uh, this is what the data is transformed into on the right hand side where as you can see the median is more or less equal right here in the center 
and the data points are now in uh, a range of zero to one and uh, so that's the quantile transformed uh, data set as shown here on the right hand side so the points to remember uh, from the discussion so far is that why would we want to use a, our pre-processing using quantile transform uh, pre-processing to bring a data set into a shape and form such as a normal distribution uh, could help improve accuracy of a machine learning model and another thing to note is that in quantile transform the uh, the transformation after even though the data set is transformed it does preserve the rank of values and it's a robust transformation which means that it's not susceptible to outliers and finally uh, one key important point is that it uh, this particular type of transformation can distort the uh, distances between features uh, in your data set and the correlation between them that was it for this video if i have any comments or suggestions please let me know in the comment section below we'll continue the discussion on implementation in jupyter notebook in the next video uh, please like share and subscribe i hope to see you all in the next video thank you